Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Ko Pen Blackmore, toko ingoa. It's great to be here today and, and thank you for the opportunity to share some of our, our learnings and experiences as an extended care team with you all as we support primary care to improve health outcomes for Māori. Firstly, I'm going to share with you a little bit about actually what we have been doing and then move on to how we've changed. And at this point, I'd like to acknowledge Shane Rake, um, who is with me today, um, and how important he has been both to our team, um, to our changes, and to Māori, and you will see this as he shares his story in the second part of this presentation. Now, the next two slides are um, from a pamphlet that we developed in, um, a couple of years ago as we tried to um, think of different ways of sharing what we do with the general practice team. So you can see here we, we um, cover Taupo Turangi, we have uh, four practices that we work with, and I'm proud of the relationships we have with Lakes DHB, Tuwharitoa Health, the Fono Order Navigators, Te Akamatu, which is the um, DHB Kaupapa Māori service, and of course Ngāti Tuwharitoa. So this is the second page, and you'll see up here this is our team. We're lucky enough to have a clinical pharmacist, um, and we have had a, a kaiafina with us uh, for, a, for 18 months probably before Shane came on board. Um, a fantastic team and, and a very special team, actually. So we get, we get about uh, 16 to 20 referrals a week from general practice. Um, and our intervention is, has been pretty standard, one-on-ones, phono group consults. We do land-based pool groups. Um, and as I said, we had Shana. You can see Shana here. Um, whoops, I'll go back. Uh, Shana here, who was our Kaiafina, uh, who was with us for two years, and we developed her on, and she's now in her first semester of nursing, which is going to be fantastic um, the future for her. So um, she's supporting our general practice marae and community clinics there. You can see her at uh, the Nukaho uh, marae there, um, which is also... Uh, what, we, what, we, what we support as a general practice team. So I guess as a team, I felt we've always been innovative and we've worked from the bottom up and we've just got out there and done things. There's a few things that have helped us in that. Um, I guess one of the, the things have been the change to the healthcare home model. All our four practices have adopted that in Taupo and Turangi. And you can see um, that our long-term condition interdis interdisciplinary team meetings that we have with our partners, with Tuwharitoa Health um, and the commu other community partners, are a really um, strong place where we manage care planning um, and we're proactive in that care planning. And so I work really hard not to be um, reactive, which is one of the philosophies of the healthcare home model. One of the other innovations that we is starting to work really well in the locality and promote change is our locality peer groups, where our, our four practices work together on actually similar, similar um, projects. And, and what we're looking at at one at the moment is where our clinical pharmacist does some auditing and review processes um, across all four, four practices. But even though we were quite innovative and actually working really well, we still knew that there was a group of um, clients out there that we weren't getting uh, good engagement and better health outcomes. So this is where Lakes DHB supported us um, with a flexible contract which we're, we're thankful for that, and it allowed us to actually start to look and be able to work differently. And that's um, when we thought, right, well, let's look at um, peer support and a kaiārahi, someone that's had lived experience, and we knew Shane well, um, and we knew he'd be great at this role, and that's how he came on board. So uh, the other part that we thought we knew we had to look at was our cultural competency and... Um, our cultural safety. 
and explore that a little bit deeper. I think we had um, the previous well, 18 months before we did this, we had had eight weeks of te reo lessons that um, Pinnacle HR supported. That was really valuable. But actually we knew that we needed to actually explore our own identity a bit more and what biculturalism actually meant to us and what would that look like for us. Um, have we got any institutional bias going on within our team? And do we actually challenge that when we are at meetings where we see that? So um, really important discussions that we had and I think what really made the, another change for us was actually reviewing our values and we agreed on the three values there of whanaungatanga, manakitanga and kotahitanga as a team and we challenged each other to uh, see how we were using these within our consults with clients, within our behaviours as a team. And I have recently been looking at uh, some of Ngāti Tūwhari Tō's uh, strategic planning. We have similar values, obviously, for Nōngatanga and Manakitanga, but I think our next goal is to really look at Rangatiratanga and Kaitiakitanga as we go forward with um, hopefully more co-design of projects. So I'm really proud of this slide, actually, and it's just uh, an example of some outcomes of some brainstorming we did with um, our iwi health leadership team, our uh, four general practices across the bottom were all at the table, Tuwharitoa Health um, and the DHB, and we explored different ways of working. We were really trying to... Um, get closer uh, connections with the local hapu, and we talked about using the iwi leadership team communication pathways out to our hapu, and um, nothing has come from this at the moment, but it's been a great platform uh, for uh, lots of discussions, and I know we're going to come back to this and, and use a lot from uh, what we learnt in this discussion. And maybe it might even be to Tumu Waiora, which is where we go with this, um, which we've been lucky to have in place for the last six months. Um, this is just the most fantastic programme. We've had three health improvement practitioners um, and two health coaches. It's been a way that, as we've recruited, that we've been able to increase the diversity in our team. So they sit within the extended care team and but actually work in the practices. Our practices love it. Um, our GPs are humbled with some of the um, feedback they get from their health improvement practices, practitioners and coaches around some clients that they've referred that um, they've discovered things below the surface that, you know, they weren't aware of. And I think sometimes also the general practice team have been surprised at the simplicity of the plans that that the HIPs and health coaches have made, and I agree with John from yesterday that equity is not always about the big things, but um, I can't speak highly enough of the experiences we've had and the support around our first steps of running out the Te Tumu Waiora programme. The two, Te Tumu um, Waiora programme is wider than just the, those one-on-one -on -one, um, consults, and I think this here, the pathways that we look going to start to look at for long-term condition, now we've sort of embedded our practitioners, is really exciting. So general practice, you know, may choose that uh, all clients with a, a high HbA1c over 80 or whatever see the HIP first uh, to look at their values. It's value-based. It's behavioural health consultancy. It's just fantastic. Um, and we're starting, whoops, um, starting with some process mapping with our general practices to, you know, how we're going to incorporate our HIPs and our health coaches and the extended care team, you know, co-design. Um, so a really exciting space. Another space that we're looking at as part of the Te Tumu Waiora program is uh, that the health improvement practices practitioners and coaches support group work. So we're starting to explore a new group called Te Whaiora Ho, and um, we've had some discussions with Ngāti Tūwhari Tōra about actually improving our co-design practices and, and getting more input, input. And so I got some great learnings from a lot of the discussions yesterday that will help with that. Um, 
This is not quite in practice health coaching that um, the program uh, promotes, but actually it's we're, we're evolving our program all of the time. And this is um, a health coach facilitated walk and talk group at the Turtle Pools in Turangi. We're lucky enough to, the council supports 50% uh, reduction in fees for our clients um, for, the tu for both pools actually, the AC bars and the Turtle Pools. Um, and my very wise exercise consultant said to me before I came down here, you know, Pen, it's not often, it's not always about the exercise, it's about the power of the water and the wairua and the connectedness of these types of um, exercise programs. And Shane is our expert on that, and so I'm going to hand over to him. Uh, my journey started from when I was young, I think. My mum died when I was 14 from her diabetes. Dad had a stroke, he drank every day. Always had to have his beers after work. That was mum's job, make sure he had his two flagons. My mum died when uh, we went to a family reunion in Hawera. And if I knew now what I, if I knew then what I know now about diabetes, probably could have saved her. She died when she was 45. We used to give her an injection when we were kids. It was the old school way with the needle and the, the bottle. We thought it was fun. We didn't know what it was. My food of choice when I was a kid, lollies, Sally Luns. My auntie owned the fish and chip shop by the primary school. So that was lunch every day. My adult drinking drugs, KFC, was an everyday thing. Work, drink, sleep, and repeat. That's all I did. So I didn't have a partner, no kids. So all I did was work, drink, do the same thing again the next day. Then I met my partner. With my drinking every day, I just woke up one day and I thought, no, nah, I've had enough. So I gave up drinking then. In cold turkey. She changed my diet and I my heaviest I was two hundred and eighty plus kgs. Well that's what my doctor said. <laughs> well he didn't have a scales big enough to weigh me. So he got me to stand on two of those ones with the round. And he just goes, Oh are you that's about two hundred and eighty plus. Oh yeah. So, oh, can I have my pills? Can I, can I go? That's all it was, my doctors. Just go and get my pills. Say yes. He referred me to Sports Waikato about three or four times. I just go, yeah. Get my script and off. So I met here. And then I knew my body was packing up. So I started... program with Pinnacle Health. We uh, slowly started learning more about my health and engaging with my practice, my doctor. But there's one thing, you just need to make it a bit more simple. They can talk to you about, till the cows come home and it'll just go in there and out daily. So I've been working with fellas 
just my job now I support them to the doctors just to make it easier for them. So the doctor can talk, he's talking to one client, he's talking about freezer mud and my client's going, <laughs> and I says, oh, your mummy pill. And he goes, oh, yeah. And then the doctor goes, oh, why didn't I just say that? <laughs> and the fitter I got, the more active I got, the more sore I got. Because when I was big, I didn't move that much. Then I had arthritis in both hips. And the surgeon wouldn't touch me until I got down to 150 kgs. So I had lost my first 70 kgs with a change, just with a change of diet and gave up drinking. I reversed my diabetes, my risks of heart attack and stroke gone from 90% down to gone now, more or less. It's most of the pills I used to take, most of them were painkillers. Many on, oh, I'm missing one, it's an old picture. Because my past is still coming to kick my ass. My liver's packed up. So I'm on in tech of here now for the rest of my life. Body's still falling to bits, pinched nerves, and but I'm learning to manage my health now, so. So I went from that to that. And all those spuds is how much weight I've lost. leads me into this. Because working with Pinnacle, one of my goals was to get back to work. And they rang me one Christmas and said, oh, do you want a job? Because mm -hmm. I thought when I get back to work, I'd go back to the mill or driving again. So I said, oh, yeah. It was coming up to winter and I didn't want to go work out in the cold. So I took on the challenge and started as a peer support. Just supporting me in the pool. You want to get healthy, get the diabetes under control. Supporting them to appointments. And then Pen let me sort of run with my role because it was a new job. It was a made up one actually, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was met Kevin Pahina from Rotorua, from Tani Takituaki, and he had heard about my journey, so I go over there and tell my journey to, to his men on his programme. And then we've set it up in Taupo. Tani Takituaki just, yeah, men standing together. These are our values we came up with, me and the men and Shana. These are our supports we get. Even I uh, put in a submission with the, one of the iwi to get funding, pay for their pools and other things. We travel to Rotorua. And the self-management, they're still going to the pools now. I've only run two cohorts in the last year. And our next one starts after the next school holidays. We have graduation. I've cut it all short because I've got a video for you all to sum it all up. Oh, my whole PowerPoint's been cut, chopped to bits <laughs> to fit it in the 20 minutes. I think the next slide's an out of thing too. And uh, it's based on Tafari Tapafa. We do a self-diagnosis at the beginning and at the end. See how everything's ticking over, body, mind, soul. So here's a little video 
of the whole. Time for questions. Any questions? Yeah. Um, Shane and I will be around over the day if anyone has any questions and very, very happy to discuss further. <laughs>